Hi fellow V-teamers, this is Anson Garcia and I've been doing some videos the last few years and picked up some good tips and tricks that I'm going to show you since we're in this home mode now. We're going to be delivering more presentations and engaging with our customers more through Zoom and WebEx. So hopefully these tips give you a little uh, something to put in your toolkit and help you out. So I'm going to talk about four things. First, display setup. You see I have three displays here. I'm going to show you why that is the best way to deliver a presentation. Secondly, I'm going to show you the webcam setup. Now I don't have any special webcams or anything like that. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you where exactly to put it where I think it's most engaging for a customer. I'm going to tell you about a mic and how to set up your mic so you can get rid of those ridiculous headsets that you have and look more natural and engage with your customer in a more natural looking setting just like you're sitting next to them in a meeting and most importantly I'm going to show you the best whiteboarding and annotation tools I have used those ridiculous ones inside WebEx and inside Zoom do not work that's why you don't use them today I don't think I've ever seen one person use Zoom annotation or whiteboarding or WebEx whiteboarding and the new annotation tools inside WebEx Teams. I haven't seen them used once, not once. If I think back, you know, maybe I'm lying, maybe once, maybe twice in the past 13, 14 years I've been here at Verizon. Why is that? Because they're not simple to use and they really stink right and when you do use them they look all jiggity jaggedy and you can't even draw a proper circle because you have to use this thing alright so how can we get away from that thing and get into a natural what we would whiteboard on a on a regular whiteboard if we were sitting in a boardroom somewhere or inside a technical uh, meeting inside with a customer and they had a whiteboard in there what would we do um, hey, none of us have WebEx boards or anything like that to have at home, but even those, I haven't seen those used a lot. So we have a lot of WebEx boards around Verizon. I haven't seen any of those used effectively because they still stink too. Because what do you want to do with a whiteboard? Usually, you have to do some kind of background or think of a background, and you want to connect things together and things like that. And you want to quickly go from the whiteboard, think of the old school way being in the customer site. You want to go from the whiteboard to the slide presentation you have on the wall and back and forth. You know, So how do we do that effectively? Uh, I'm going to show you the tools that I have found. They have been very, very helpful to me. I've stuck with them. I went through a couple of iterations. And anyway, let's get to it. Okay, the first thing. What's the deal with the three displays? Is it just because I want to be cool and have a lot of displays in front of me? No. There's a particular reason I do it. And if you look here, okay, three displays. Why do I think that's the most effective way to give a presentation to a customer? Well, if you're giving a presentation, here I have a PowerPoint presentation. You can see I have it in presentation mode. What is it you want in presentation mode? If you're doing an effective presentation, you need your notes, right? Not just to go through bullets. You don't want to go bullet by bullet. You want to have some narrative around. You want to have some, you want to put some things down of some things you're going to talk about about this slide. This slide is just going to, they're going to read a little bit of the slide. You don't want them reading the slide per se. And I'm not an expert pres uh, presenter by any means, but I do know you don't want to catch the customer reading the slide. You want to engage them in the video and talk about the slide. All right. And then use the slide just as a cursory tool maybe to draw on or check some points that you went over at the very last of that slide before you go to the next slide. So why do I think this is most effective? Because you can put your, this is on Zoom or WebEx meetings, you can share this screen, right? And then you have your presentation notes over here. Remember in PowerPoint presentation you can put a presentation mode and, and display your notes and the next slide and things like that right in here. And then look where I have the camera. This speaks to the camera, uh, topic number two. The camera is right over my notes. Why? Because I'm reading my notes. 
Sometimes I'm really nervous on a particular slide and forget a lot of things and I'll write down verbatim exactly what I want to say and sometimes I'll read it trying to be as natural as possible of course but I'll read those notes and it looks like to the other participants to the customer or to anyone else that's on the WebEx or Zoom meeting as I'm looking at them and talking to them because I'm looking right here okay so that's why I have these two displays in PowerPoint presentation mode and have my webcam right above my notes. Now why do I have the third big display up here? It's not to watch the football game or anything like that, but while I'm giving the presentation, there's questions that come up in the room or by the customer, and sometimes, many times, I don't know the answer to them. I think I know, but you know how that is. You, you're right in the middle of a presentation, you're really concentrated on something here, and they ask you a question, well very quickly, I don't have to mess with my slide, I don't have to mess with my notes, I can go right to this screen, look up something, Google it, and it'll jog a memory, or I can read something very quickly and then answer the question. All right, or maybe there's some discussion going on in the room uh, amongst the customers, uh, that are sitting in the room that we're giving, or they're, if they're remote too, they they start discussing some things uh, back and forth on, uh, through the audio, and I can look up stuff. They never see any disruption in what I'm sharing, or anything like that. Also, if I have this pretty low here, it's not high. I can also, while I'm back here looking, it almost appears that I'm still looking at the camera, although I'm looking up. You know, I'm Googling some stuff right up here. In fact, sometimes when I'm reading, you know, and I'm engaging the customer, I'll kind of put it down here. You know, I won't cover up that, but I'll do something like this. I'll get this kind of thinned out, and I'll put it right here. And if I'm reading something, then my eyes don't go too high. All right, so I can read something right there and just scroll, and I'll be okay. Okay? Okay, let's switch mic setup. This is what they call a um, Blue Yeti. Okay, for vloggers, this is kind of the standard out there for your intro vlogger. Um, I got a little boom here. It comes on a stand. Um, this is about $100, something like that. In fact, just back to the displays. You know displays are cheap. You guys know that. You can pick them at Costco, Craigslist, OfferUp. In fact, this is a TV. TVs you can get really cheap. I don't need high quality here. 1080p is fine. I don't need 4K or anything like that here. 1080p because I don't want I want to be back here and be able to read it while I'm engaging the customer on, on the video camera here. Okay, back to the Blue Yeti. This is a great device. Get rid of the uh, things on your ears. It doesn't look natural. It doesn't look like you're engaging inside a room or anything like that. It doesn't look immersive is the old term that we used to use. You get this Blue Yeti. It's out of the camera angle. It's directional. It has great echo cancellation. When you're on computer audio in a WebEx or Zoom, it is superb. No echo, no nothing. The other benefit, it's um, directional. I think I said that. So if anybody comes in on the side or the kids are in the background or anything like that, it's not going to pick them up. It's going to pick up only what's directly in front of it and only a few feet in front of it. So they got a lot of technology built in here and you have gain and volume and things like that here. The other thing I like about it is there's a mute button right here. So I'll kind of pull it right down in here somewhere when I'm giving a presentation. I push that button, it's going to blink at me. I got that in my peripheral vision. You know, even though I'm looking this way and looking to the customer, I can see this blinking. All right, so any uh, presentations uh, or, or meetings that you're on, it's a great tool no matter if you're giving presentations or just been on a regular internal meeting because it's going to visually indicate you're going to see that blinking out of the corner of your eye. And as soon as you start talking, I have found that this is way superior than to just rely on Zoom tools or WebEx tools because those kind of disappear and you don't know that you're, um, you're on mute, you know, and people start talking all the time, right? And they say, oh, I was on mute. That's the biggest thing today. The biggest thing happens almost every call, you know, oh, I was talking on mute. This one, no worries, because you're going to, you're going to, your behavior will change and uh, you'll get accustomed to always getting up here and pushing that button and make sure that it's not blinking at you. If it's blinking at you, you're on mute. 
okay? Blue Yeti, I'll put in the description also, uh, or the link to the Amazon uh, product you know, in the description. Let's see, what else? Of course, webcams, you can get any webcam. We've talked about the display, webcam, uh, mic setup. It's a USB, by the way. And uh, let's talk about, let's just go back to displays real quick, because I know you guys are saying, Anson, Anson, you know, I got a work laptop, or I got a work Mac, and it just, I can't hook up multiple displays or whatever. Most of the PCs, most of the HPs that we have, have two, dis uh, two display ports in the back. And you can do two displays and then a third with a laptop. Okay, what if you want to go beyond that and you want to have something like this? What you want to look for is pluggable. Uh, these are going to hook up uh, type A or type C connectors to your laptop. And they're great devices. They're called pluggable. Okay, they're kind of the leading guys uh, in the industry. They're the ones I've always seen out there. It, it, it's kind of sold as a as a you know, laptop dock so you have ethernet and you have a couple of display ports over here hdmi dvi and i got a bunch of um, uh, usb 3 ports as well here but that's going to give you more displays on your laptop if you don't have uh, already enough on there already okay let's put that away but anson i have a mac and they don't let me do anything on the mac i can't even hook up a usb port okay here's your solution Here's a Dell D6000. I can confirm to you this works on a modern, brand new MacBook Pro that's Verizon owned. Okay, it's the D6000 Dell. You can get these on Amazon too. These are a little pricey, you know, so uh, see if you can get it on OfferUp or, you know, Facebook Marketplace or what have you. D6000. Now, uh, this one here has two display ports. Okay, you get a display port to HDMI or what have you, anything like that, if you guys know what that is. Uh, if you don't, just Google it, you'll figure it out. And there's an HDMI port. So I can have three monitors hanging right off here. This has got a type C or type A and a type C connector. It's kind of this funky little thing I can plug down into that, but I got a type C and a type A on there. That'll go in your Mac, your MacBook Pro, or the type C will. And then in self-service, and you Mac users know what I'm talking about, in self-service, look for Display Link. And you're going to find an application. It's not an application, it's actually drivers. And install those drivers, and this guy will work. Okay, now, in theory, this is Display Link technology as well. And in theory, this should work also. I haven't confirmed that this uh, works. But all these modern, you know, hookup USB 3, 3.1, Type-C, um, and you can extend displays. You can get up to six displays with these things. I mean, you can actually um, uh, daisy chain them. You can do all kinds of things. But there, you can go search on YouTube and you'll find some stuff on this. But those are the two ways that you're going to extend and get three displays. If you have the, you know, if you have to use a work uh PC or Mac, that's going to be your answer. All right, so let's talk about the most exciting thing I think that I have discovered in my journey trying to make videos and trying to do presentations, and that is this guy right here. Okay, what is this? It's nothing more than an iPad. Okay, what you need is an iPad and a Apple Pencil. Now, if you need a modern iPad, something that supports Apple Pencils. Not all iPads support Apple Pencils, so you want to be careful on what you buy. If you're taking one out of the closet or something like that, something that's old, you can do what I'm talking about, and you'll need a capacitive touch uh, pen, you know, five bucks on Amazon, all right? And they kind of look a little funky. They have a little thing on, on, on the end there. Not as good, I can tell you, not as good. The perfect solution is iPad and Apple Pencil. And then you're, what you're going to do, or what you're going to be able to do, is you're going to be able to tie this iPad to the screen that you're sharing on WebEx or Zoom. Okay, now what does that buy you? Hopefully the display, these are white. I know this is a lot, there's a lot of white here, and this camera is not picking up very much. And I'm going to go into software that's called Doceri. Doceri, let me just make sure. D-O-C-E-R-I. D-O 
C-E-R-I. These guys really cater to education. And what does it allow a teacher to do? To walk around with an iPad, do whiteboarding and annotating on their PC that they're sharing a screen via HDMI to the projector. Okay? That's really what it's for. Now think about that. You're connecting an iPad to the PC screen where you can annotate on the screen and also do a whiteboard on the screen, on the, on the PC screen. Well, remember what we're doing on the PC, we're going to do it on the screen too. The only change is we're sharing the screen, but that's no problem. That's no problem because it's the same thing, all right? And I'll put a little demo here uh, in the, uh, I'll put a little video excerpt here. You can see how it works. Okay, here's my presentation. I'm in presentation mode and watch this so as I'm going through concepts I can check uh, okay now I'm doing this on my iPad now and I see that particular slide I can circle things maybe I'm talking about this uh, I can use different colors you know maybe you know did I go through that concept did I go through co that concept and then if I need to make little you know here's a little router here here's a router here maybe the CE customer router I have an internet and this is very I'm doing this very quick just to make the video quick but I have very good control of what I maybe I want to write my name right here and you can see how um, well I have control of my pen and also there's all kind of things in here I can erase I can go back let's go back there uh, things like that of course we have erasers and things like that so all kind of different colors and pen types maybe I want to highlight something you know like this or do that and also the really neat thing and I'll show you the now I have a big whiteboard and now I can okay you can see I have command of my writing and my writing style and if I want to do a drawing or something maybe I want to make a little router here and a router over here and this is the CE you know router here and I can do that very quickly okay I'm not trying to do a mouse or anything like that it's very natural for me to be writing on this whiteboard and then I can rewind things like that too I can highlight I can do all kind of things I got you know markers uh, different style of markers if I want a marker style the pins obviously and the, the uh, thickness and size and spacing and you know um, opacity of the pen I mean it's just all kind of things you can do I mean this is a true whiteboard with all the gadgets and pens and ability to draw circles and ellipses and all this kind of stuff and what's really neat is just think of if you weren't here and maybe you had a slide like this slide and maybe I had some I do have some concepts just go down do I have a slide yeah I mean I have a slide with some pictures here but anyway if I was on this slide and you know I wanted to connect up um, things here and there I could you know do this I could do that and you know just pretend I had like a network here or if you're a VoIP guy you know some routers and some cubes SBC's or something and then you can start connecting those together or saying you know hey the media path or RTC is this you know dotted line uh, but the media path is this uh, uh, purple line or what have you so you can really get creative very easily instead of messing with a bunch of annotation inside PowerPoint which takes forever to do you can do it real time with your customer while drawing it and keeping them more engaged anyway let me show you the software what it looks like here uh, all I do is push to Siri and then I connect up to my PC all right, and I got, I got the, you can't see this, but I have uh, three displays here. It shows me my three displays, and I'm just picking display number uh, three, which is this one, which I'm going to be sharing on WebEx or Zoom. Okay, now, I have the slide here. I can see the slide, so if I have something on the slide, maybe a picture or something like that, maybe a network or SD-WAN concept or something like that, I can annotate on the slide. Very easy. It's natural. For me, well, let's see. I want to pick my color. 
I can annotate. Oh, we went through that concept. We went through that concept. I can do all that stuff. It's coming right out here on my display, which then is shared on WebEx or Zoom. So the customer is seeing that, or the other participants in the uh, web conference are seeing that. Not only that, but I can very. It's very natural. So I'm I'm drawing. I'm drawing circles. I can I can write very easily. You know. So my everything's very smooth because I'm writing naturally. I'm not using my mouse or anything weird like that not only that but it's right here next to me and then what i have here is a little display mount right it's a laptop display mount or a, a keyboard tray so here's where the display goes i got the arm back here and i use it for hanging stuff on but then i can bring that out so if i'm engaging my my keyboard right here i'm it's very natural for me to pick up my pen and start drawing and then another great thing here is I can go right to a whiteboard. You can see my screen here, it went to a whiteboard. Okay, and now I can start whiteboarding. And again, I'm standing up right now, but if I were sitting down, this is very natural to me. Okay, it's very natural. Uh, I can draw routers and I can draw networks and I can draw the internet and I can get concepts, uh, uh, concepts across very, very well. The really good thing about it also is I can have a real large diagram because I can zoom I can zoom in here, okay, and I can really get detailed here and then zoom out and then go to another part of the whiteboard and things like that. So uh, I can really realistically have like almost like I'm sitting in a room with a customer and I have the um, the whole you know wall with a whiteboard. And there's all kind of neat things. This thing is very powerful. I can do a chalkboard if I like that color. I have different color pens, different thicknesses. Uh, different backgrounds and things like that. Now the really cool thing about it, the really thing I like doing with this thing is I don't have, if I want backgrounds, let's say I want a couple of buildings and I have want an internet cloud in the middle or something like that, all I do is on my slide, on my PowerPoint slide, I do the drawing that I want to start out with. And remember I can annotate and then I can save those drawings as well to JPEGs or PDFs and make them part of the uh, presentation. Maybe I email it to the customer or the participants or whatever like that. You can also replay, you know, so you can see your drawings as they progress. You can rewind a drawing. So if you want to go back, if you drew a bunch of stuff on a, on a board or annotated and you said, oh, I kind of messed up. I want to show you a concept, but I need to clean all the stuff up. There's a little, there's a little place you, you, you come up in here and you can drag it back and you drag back the, all the annotations and you can start again. Okay. Um, what else is there on here? Of course, there's erasers and all that normal stuff. There's backgrounds you can bring in here, but again, I just use the slides as backgrounds when I'm not in whiteboard mode. There, I'm back on slide mode. I know you can't see that very well, but um, yes, did I want to say anything else here? Oh, it integrates with PowerPoint. So I can run the show right from here. Remember, I'm just connected up to my PC. You can see my PowerPoint presentation right there. And right here, I can I can uh, page down and page up here, and so I can really control everything through here, right here, and keep the pen in my hand, and actually go through the concepts with the customer, you know, right here. Oh, I'm going through this. I'm going, and I'm keeping them engaged, and I'm keeping their eyes on particular topics, so they're not caught reading through, you know. If I'm going to go through this bullet point right here. I'm going to circle that bullet point. It's going to circle on the slide. They're going to see that, and they're not going to have the tendency to kind of drift off and start reading, you know, other things on the slide, and then I can start drawing over here and things like that too. Anyway, okay, those are the tips that I can tell you, and then a couple of extra tips. Uh, obviously, your background. Okay, now I've had some trouble with the background. I kind of got a big building here, and what I did. Uh, sometimes the kids would come back. There's a door right over here. Sometimes kids would come, you know, in, and my wife would come in and things like that. You know how that goes. And so what I did is I, you know, for 30 bucks, got a background. And there's all kind of cool backgrounds on Amazon. And they're mainly used for, you know, wedding pictures or pictures or something like that. Like you got a barn door. I think this was like 20 bucks or something like that. Okay. So you can get a lot of these. They're 8 foot or 10 foot wide by by seven foot or something like that. So there's plenty of coverage to get you a background. And then there's, for $38, I believe, there is uh, there's a tripod, there's a stand that you can hang this on, okay? And then what I decided to do is just hang it on 
the purlins on my ceiling right here in my building. I, for a while, used the tripods, and it was fine. You know, and they're really, they're, they got quick release. You could collapse it, put it in the corner, bring it out when you need it, and things like that. So, anyway, those are my tips for engaging with your customer uh, with PowerPoint and whiteboarding in a more powerful way. Thanks, and uh, stay safe out there. Wash your hands, and don't shake anybody's hand.